With Nigeria drifting towards a two-party system, there have been calls for a third force to come into play to provide a better choice for Nigerians, as many believe that the two major political parties are probably one and the same vehicle to power because of the carpet crossing of the same politicians between both parties. It seems the much-awaited third force is finally here with the confirmation by the National Consultative Front that it will, on October 1, unveil its new mega-political movement preparatory to them dissolving into one of the smaller political parties before the 2023 general election. Now, the Rescue Nigeria group has lamented the country's major developmental challenges, and it is now combining its strength with the National Consultative Front to birth a larger political movement. They have scheduled a National Rescue Summit on the 1st of October to commemorate the 61st independence anniversary of Nigeria. The star-studded new political movement has many professionals in different fields as political observers keenly await their alternative plans for Nigeria. Well, joining us now is a representative of the Rescue Nigeria Project, Aisha Dankani. She is also a lawyer and former candidate of uh, People's Redemption Party for the La Federal Constituency in Kano State in the last 2019 general election. Good to have you uh, join us in the studio. Now, let's talk about the Rescue Nigeria uh, group and uh, some of the issues that you have highlighted. You have said that this project is meant to provide an alternative uh, narrative in the country's polity and that you want to drive the country through a development-based uh, polity that will help to create the needed change that Nigerians need, saying that the APC and PDP don't seem to be driving this country to the right direction. What are those permutations you're working on? OK, good evening, Nigerians. And thank you for having me. Um, you see, I don't want to dwell into all the issues. We all know very well as Nigerians where we are and what's wrong in our country. Um, with the worry and all the discussions that have come um, into place, we, our fingers, or the f uh, definitive finger has been pointed to one thing, leadership. And uh, when you look more deeply, it's the recruitment process that has brought the problems. And uh, so, um, because it is the major culprit, we came together, concerned Nigerians, who are tired of the status quo. Who knows that something has to be done? We don't want to return to our creator and leave a country for our children. That is what it is. So all over the country, and names keep coming just automatically because we either know you, your background, your bad degree, or what you stand for. So we invited these Nigerians together. And we felt, let's do something about this country. And what we are doing is to now do things differently. And what exactly is that? Because uh, Nigerians need to know that you're very different from the two major political parties and other political organizations. Yeah, what we are saying, think outside the box. What's the problem? Like I told you, we put our finger on leadership. And the recruitment mechanism is wrong. So what we are saying, let's put a criteria so that not just one man sits in a state and everybody else that is supposed to hold an office in the state comes from that man. It's not done that way. It's not done that way anywhere that democracy has worked. So we are now going to put up some criteria format where we now know you're fit for leadership. The, we have put some core values that we felt you should, we should work around them if we want to produce leaders. Yes, you, you identify leadership recruitment as a major challenge because yes. I was there myself we look and I listened to lots of persons. Exactly. But the route to leadership is what... We don't know how you want to get to that leadership positions by bringing those people on board that yes. you feel are the best hands for the country. You saw on at the back of the board, we wrote ICPC. And ICPC there stood for four things. We looked at inclusiveness, we looked at competence, we looked at poverty, and we looked at courage as core values. Then we now went in to now say, look, as Nigerians, wherever you're going to stand, we're going to have a chat a kind of a format to say, look, you have to fit into A, B, C, D, E. And that chat is being put on, and many conversations are now taking place. We are going to stimulate conversations on what the parties will be looking at. Parties that really mean well.
for this country I really want the, the real change. We are going to uh, energize the youth into looking at what true development really is and who can deliver. We are going to not just expect, we are going to inspect. So we are pulling a force. We are pulling the strength, you know, the required demography that is being needed to force this change. And, and a, a lot of people are wondering if you are not being academic about these issues because they just say that when it comes to Nigerian politics and Nigerian politicians, um, academic matters don't seem to resolve the issues. We are um, you have to be very practical. Are you eventually going to adopt one of the smaller parties before the 2023 general elections like we've been hearing? Or don't you think it's late for you even coming on board now? Because some people have said that uh, it looks like you are taking time to come out. No, we are not a political party. As it yes, is. but you're We're a, movement a movement that must use a political party exactly. to achieve your aims. We are going to support cor courageous people. We are going to support competent people. We are going to support people of integrity. It doesn't matter which party it is. Where the bulk of what we want is being situated, that's where we are going to go. So, and and uh, you, you'll be surprised. Within a short period of time, we were in hundreds. But before you know it, we're going to go in towns. I'm sure many Nigerians like us, those good Nigerians who really want good governance, are much more than this few one point something percent that have hold us to ransom and have just, you know, gallivanted from one party to another and appear in just uh, different colors. But they are the same uh, people in different style. Yeah, I mean, I, I would want to just take a... a, a a uh, classical example from you, when mm -hmm. you wanted to contest, for example, you decided to go to an ideological party, yes. uh, the PRP, yeah. and you didn't choose the APC or PDP. Yeah. Why did you take that decision? Because in that two parties, like you well know, and like all Nigerians know, um, people of uh, probity, people that really want to serve this nation, are not just being uh, given a chance. And so why did it, the Nigerians that you're trying to converse, you know, these issues on their behalf not vote you? In your constituency? They voted for me. I won the elections. But you know what happened in our constituency. There was a third... How was that? Well, you knew what happened with when they said inconclusive and all the noise that now surrounded the inconclusive. There are people who we knew uh, went on, were, came into office whose uh, was, was not a legitimate uh, way of uh, you know, uh, coming into office. They didn't win the elections. And this is the kind of but leadership. But INEC announced them as winners. Yeah, but you know, announce, if INEC announced you a winner, you, are, you hold the office. But that does not give legitimacy. Very interesting indeed. Yeah. Now, aren't you going to see that on a larger scale? If, for example, all of you still decide to, to build um, uh, you know, yourselves around one candidate, aren't you afraid that uh, that candidate may be seen as an academic politician and not a practical politician and Nigerians won't vote for that person for president in 2023? We are not building ourselves around a candidate. We are building ourselves around these core values and principles that we stand for. But you must have people who represent those core values. These are not people that we will put into it. These are people that the values and the principles will automatically bring into bear. And all of us as Nigerians who mean well for this country will be, will be you know, or, or will agree with whoever emerges. Because it's not going to emerge because we want those candidates to emerge. They are going to emerge because they are the right people f uh, within the circle of the people that should re uh, lead this nation. Are you yearning for a return to ideological parties like it used to happen in the past? Yeah, if this is best for us, why not? And so we have these two biggest political parties. What are the major challenges that you feel, apart from leadership recruitment, that's making them not to achieve the mandate of Nigerians? to change the political atmosphere? You know, things that are being come from selfish ends are always difficult for people to let go. Again, we are used to business as usual. And for, for, for things to change everywhere else in the world, you need some good, conscientized people to now bend it and change it. Um, I will not tell you these parties are owned by Nigerians. These parties are owned by just a few people click around it who now ball the rest of Nigerians to just do what they want. Like I told you, how much of, a how much of Nigerians are really active players in these political parties? So if one person decides who
who becomes what in the whole state. You, I, I listened to you while I was waiting. You were talking to one of the PDP, and he, he told you that uh, they had decided, and they here is a circle of just few people who will now look at who becomes uh, chairman of the party, who now becomes their presidential candidate, and so on and so forth. Is that a democratic process? So how can Nigerians um, own the system, the process of electing a leader that's well acceptable by everyone? What are the alternatives that you're those bringing on the ground? A, yes, those of all the silver co uh, atom of conscience in us should come together in mass. That mass movement with this criteria I spoke to you about, you know, will compel now the, the true change that we want. But that change uh, must come through a political party. Yes, a political party we will join. So a are you considering party? maybe uh, your PRP or other smaller political parties will eventually merge into? This thought will bend people to think. You know, we have allowed things to rot to, we, we will not, we will cut below the rotten top and continue. Uh, this and change, once people of, uh, of, of, uh, of credible people and people that, you know, that really matter and could, could force this change, and that is why as soon as we gather on that day, I think you were there, and you saw the caliber of people that were there. Every, it, it, it sounded a bell that this time some people are serious. And that's why you called us a third force, even when we did not declare to be a political party. Yes, I mean, very interesting because a lot of Nigerians say they're expecting so much. But in the issues of providing governance alternatives, for example, how do we resolve the issue of insecurity and then the economic um, issues that we're facing as, as a country? What kind of narrative are you bringing out to say this is the way things should be done? These are the conversations, these are the main topics that we've had slated for conversations to the rest of Nigerians. So that over and over again, this is what will dominate, you know, our political uh, 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 discourse between now and time for elections. So that all the issues will now come out on board, not just what you, we are discussing at our RMP, but what the rest of Nigerians think. Yeah, so that we and, and, you know, I was and fascinated by that uh, Rescue Nigeria project focusing only on leadership recruitment uh, being the major challenge. Yeah. and not focusing on these basic issues that we all want to. Why did you center it on leadership recruitment? Because it's a priority. Because it's a priority. Once you get that right, the others will follow. Is the only national leaders we're talking about? How do you permit to the leaders at the grassroots? From top to bottom. And that is why I told you we cut from the rotten top to bottom. And when I say bottom, we mean all across. But some of you who are in this group have served the government or these politicians in various capacities. So why should Nigerians think you're different from the politicians you have served in the past? Because the, the, the mass recruitment which we, are, we have embarked on will bend it. These are negligible few, like I told you. Whether they, they have run to rescue Nigeria, and we have not invited people that honestly for now we are not sure that they stand for this uh, cause. Uh, maybe in due course because we are many, but I tell you the passion and the zeal which some of us have come out to do this truly and really will not allow the rot to take over. Very interesting indeed. Yeah. <laughs> we can only wish you here. Uh, well, all the way here from Arise, I must thank you, Aisha Dankani, who is a member of the Rescue Nigeria Project, a group of intellectuals, academics, and all sheets of Nigerians that are trying to rescue the country from what they say is the ongoing rot. We must thank you for coming on the show. Mm -hmm.